All right, it looks, yes, we are live. Okay, hello everybody. This is um, Tiffany um, and we are here with my other co-host, the other Tiffany. Um, so we are here today with the beautiful Miss Rachel Noble, who is the founder of The Noble Woman. And so we have her um, here for our community episodes, which we started last month. So this is our second one. So we're very honored that Miss Noble has joined us today to talk about what she is doing in the community to work with and help um, women and young girls, well, teenage girls. So um, we're just going to jump right in and get right into to it. Um, so Ms. Noble, uh, I know that we talked really briefly before we came on live, but this month is April Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and that is something that we are going to be talking about throughout the month. Um, I am a survivor myself, and I'm also an advocate in the community. And so each time that we have an episode this month, we're going to talk about it really, really briefly before we get into our main topics or our main interviews. So Ms. Noble, I know that we spoke briefly about it. So how do you feel? How do you feel about this month being Sexual Assault Awareness Month? And um, is there anything that you um, want to want to you know say to other women or teen girls when it comes to sexual assault awareness month? Definitely. Um, well, first, thank you so much for having me on the show today. I am Rachel Noble, and I'm the founder of For Noble Women, and we'll talk about what the platform is all about in the later on. But um, thinking about sexual assault, there's so many women and young girls that go through this all the time. Um, I have family and friends that I've had to console because of that. Um, a lot of times because of it, women feel like their femininity has been taken away from them. Their power is gone. And so they have to think about ways of really realizing that, yes, they are a victim, but you will not be a victim of your circumstance for the rest of your life. How do you process past that? What do you do? What kind of prayer do you even say to kind of help combat that? And so I would heavily suggest to find therapy, to speak to someone about it, uh, not to hold it in. Do not keep it from yourself. Do not keep it from your mother. Um, none of your you know, family, friends, not to broadcast it to everyone that you know, of course, because you do want to keep that information kind of confidential, but speak out for someone that can advocate for you and seek help. Right. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, as a survivor myself, I found that having people that I trusted, um, you know, after that that moment and after the trauma that happened and really for the next few months, it was just really helpful to have those people that I trusted that I was able to talk to. So I definitely would back you up there to make sure that you, you know, you reach up and you speak up and you you talk to someone. Um, and definitely, as a therapist myself, definitely um, reach out and seek some counseling, um, preferably with someone who uh, works with sexual assault survivors. Um, not saying that regular therapists that don't have that, that trauma-focused um, therapy under their belt or have not worked with survivors before, but there are so many organizations out here that do help victims that are specifically for victims of sexual assault who are going to have those therapists who have that special training to work with victims. So highly recommend that as well. So thank you for sharing that information. Thank you. I appreciate that and your support of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Yeah, so no I'm so glad that oh. you're talking about that. I'm, I'm sorry that that has happened to you. Um, yeah. But just the way that you are processing and pushing through, it speaks mm -hmm. volumes to who you are as a woman. And thank you for paving the way for others. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was a victim of sexual assault in 2005. That was actually the reason why I moved to Charlotte, because a person started stalking me. Um, and so that was the main reason why I moved to Charlotte was to get away from the D.C. area because I pressed charges against him. He was stalking me and just popping up places. And so it was it was very scary. And my parents were here at the time. I didn't have any kids. I wasn't married. And so I just came here to be closer to my family and to, you know, let them build their supports around me and, and level me a little bit while I kind of work through that trauma on my own here in a totally different environment. So um, it's been a while, but you know, 
no matter if you're a survivor or not, there are things that may trigger you and there might be, you know, moments where you, you know, reflect back at that time or something might remind you of that time. But, you know, being an advocate and helping other women has definitely been therapy for me. So I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Yes, ma'am. Um, Tiffany, um, I know that you are an advocate in the community for human trafficking. So um, would you like to share anything before we get into our interview with Ms. Rachel? Um, I think I can give a different perspective of being a victim of sexual assault because I, too, am also a survivor. Um, but um, it happened when I was 15. And after the whole thing, I had to deal with it on my own. I didn't have a support system. I didn't have, you know, I had more so, oh, well, it never would have happened if you didn't go there right. type of dialogue towards me. So I was more to blame for what happened to me than to have the support of getting through it. Um, right. And I feel like, and, and I don't hold it against those who did have that dialogue with me um, mm -hmm. because it's made me a stronger person and, yeah. um, like I said, it wasn't the first time it happened. So the second go around, mm. I didn't tell anybody. Right. Um, because I went through it the first time, pretty much processing my feelings and emotions that the second go around, I was like, oh, well, I've been through this already and I don't feel like being blamed for it. So right. let me just, you know, sit with myself <laughs> and, you know, go through it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but the human trafficking situation was different because right. there wasn't any physical sexual assault that went on. It was more of an emotional, mental mm -hmm. thing that happened and it screwed me up. That part, right. I still didn't tell anybody about it off the beginning, but I think like three strikes I was out that I, because I didn't have that support system mm -hmm. that it really played a part in how I handled that human trafficking situation. Right. Because um, it almost came to an end for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that I've gotten through it. I'm glad that I went through the therapy that I've gone through over the years. Um, I'm glad that I have become the person that I have become, that yeah. I don't shy away from expressing and sharing my stories. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's always some part of someone's story that another person can um, relate to. And that part could be their only glimmer of hope. So I push for advocacy and I push for the um, the positive of what could happen if we share and we, you know, we become the support that we couldn't be to, well, no, we become the support that we didn't have. Right. Absolutely. So right. That's where I'm at with it. And I don't have any sisters, so I'm really big on like adopting women that's just yeah <laughs> so oh you've been through it don't worry about it girl i got you right so, right <laughs> but to, to that camaraderie so that they feel they're not going through it alone right right well so. yeah thank you for sharing that thank you for sharing that it was very personal for both of you um so thank you for sharing that um i think that's a good um lead into um, For Noble Women because uh, Miss Rachel helps uh, educate women and teen girls about confidence and femininity and, you know, etiquette and class and so forth. And, you know, mm -hmm. as a survivor and working with, you know, being a social worker for over 13 years and so forth, um, you see that there is a need for this type of training and education, especially for our teen girls, because teen girls are faced with so much in the media, on social media, at school, in their neighborhoods, in the communities. And it's a misrepresentation of what we want our girls to really grow up to be. It's very over-sexualized, very disrespectful with the music and stuff like that. So um, Miss Rachel caught my attention when I saw her Instagram. Um, I can't recall what she was posting about, but it was around the holidays and it just really caught my attention. And so I wanted to make sure that she was on our um, community platform so that we can talk to her about what she does um, and, you know, the work that she does with women and teen girls. So, Ms. Rachel, tell us about you. Give us like a, a background story before For Noble Women so we can get to know you as a person. Sure. Well, thank you for that. Thank you so much. And for like following my social media platforms, I definitely appreciate that as well. And just like when you were talking about 
um, something that has happened to you, mm -hmm. the reason why we become individuals that we are today is because of what it is that we've gone through. So right. way, way back, I did not come from an affluent background. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, I came from very, very humble beginnings. I thank my mothers and I thank my grandmother, my aunts for all like really raising me to be the person that I am today. Um, mm -hmm. But there were a lot of things that I went through. And so going through middle school and high school and just being bullied verbally, um, always, you know, people wanting to fight you or whatever. And so I had to learn how to stand my ground. And it mm -hmm. takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on you and your inner peace. And then you're not really knowing like who you are because you don't know where you fit in, et cetera. Right. And so I remember after graduation being in certain situations or settings where I worked in corporate America and I missed out on certain things that I didn't know. And I'm like, I should know this information, but it wasn't given to me. It wasn't taught to me. That part of the information that wasn't talked to me that I needed to know in order to be successful. So I just started doing things. Um, my background consists of I have a bachelor's degree in communication. I'm a minor in mass communication, which is journalism. I have mm -hmm. a master's degree in business. And I've had a child care center that I share with my husband for the past 22 years. It has been April 4th, actually, now 22 years. And in the middle of that, I've just been through everything, seeing everything. Um, young mothers, what they go through. I've seen my young girls and how they're struggling with their confidence and what it is, you know, who should I be as I'm growing up? And as I'm watching these girls and I'm watching young men too, but mainly girls because I'm a woman right. and I see they're so lost and they're being raised by social media. They're mm -hmm. being raised by TV. And so right. they don't know who they are. And it puts me back in that mode of me not knowing who I was, which I told you before. And so right. I said, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to be an advocate for women and teens to teach them the proper way to be. It doesn't mean that you have to be perfect, prim and proper all the time, no. But when you are in business settings and social settings, I want my girls to know how to behave. I want them to use the correct vocabulary. I want them to use the correct fork. <laughs> so right. just down to that to that science but then also building their inner confidence their inner peace of them knowing who they are and doing that back in work as well right so, right um I okay so i think i think i remember now what it was because you just said something that triggered my mind you mm -hmm. were showing a um a table setting oh and, yes mm -hmm. I believe it was maybe around Thanksgiving. I can't remember. I remember it was around the holidays. Um, oh. And you, yep, that's what it was. It was the place setting. And I was like, it's been a long time since I've seen a formal place setting. But that's something that I learned um, working at a, a school. It was a, a private school. And that was something that the, um, the founder of the school, she taught the girls at the school. And so, um, and I haven't seen any any teachings about that since and you know that that's something that back way back in 30s 40s 50s was taught but i'm going to be honest it wasn't taught to our to our brown girls it was mainly taught in caucasian society um and so it was very very interesting and that caught my attention i remember now that caught my attention because i was like this is really something that i need to teach my daughter i know it why am i not teaching my daughter <laughs> but you just don't see it very often even in restaurants even five-star restaurants you're not you don't see them the table settings as much as you used to anymore. So that I, I remember that's what it was. That's what caught my attention. <laughs> yes, it is actually, I believe that it's a lost art. Like it we're is. not thinking about the importance of this because we leave it for 
only the Caucasian audience and right. it shouldn't be, or even people in a certain tax bracket. And right. it does not matter the tax bracket that you are in. These mm -hmm. things should be taught to our young girls, no matter the race, mm -hmm. no matter their socioeconomic background, it mm -hmm. should be taught to them. And yes. so I make sure that I teach men and I teach teens on how to do those certain things. Because when you are in those meetings with the big wigs and you're going to your galas or your galas, however you mm -hmm. pronounce it, mm -hmm. um, and you're going to those events, you want to have yourself put together from mm -hmm. top to bottom. I right. have some of my friends they're trying to grow, you know, grow on the totem pole for where it is that they're working. And they'll call me from the bathroom. Like, okay, okay. Rachel, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, okay, let's talk. Let's right. do this. So right. Either that or I'll pre-quiz them on certain things that you should talk about and things that you shouldn't talk about while mm -hmm. you are at the table or, you know, how to get your business to this next level or for mm -hmm. you for that top to think about you in that mm -hmm. retrospect. So all of those things come into context with, with etiquette and then utilizing your femininity to get you into that door as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Um, I do believe when I started following you, I also saw it was a post, I believe about dressing for a formal occasion um, mm -hmm. or it might've been a gala, but it was a formal occasion and just dressing for a formal occasion. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've been, I've been following you, young lady. I've been following you ever since. And I'm just like, this is some really good stuff that our, our, our teen girls especially need, but women need it too. Um, yeah, so, too. yeah. So when did you start for Noble Women? Tell us how that was for you. So for Noble Women just started out the blue. At first, I wanted to teach women about business because I've been in business for so long, right? And I'm like, I am stressed out just teaching <laughs> women business. Like when I leave my own business, I'm still talking about business and my head is throbbing and they're not right. ready right now. So right. I, what comes to me so easily and I'm out to brunch with my girls and it's poor etiquette to correct someone's etiquette, right? But right, my friends right. always say, Rachel, can you teach me the right way to do blah, blah, blah? And then mm -hmm. I heard it again, and then I heard it again. And then I saw um, a mother trying to teach her daughter something. We were gone to, to uh, afternoon tea or whatever. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I walked over there and I spoke to a little girl because I have this background with children and I'm like we're we're good little girls and we are proper girls let's listen to our mommy because she was her mom was trying to teach her but she was like upset she wasn't having it right and so right. just taught her just in that moment and then I went to sit sit down and she was just so happy she just wanted to be just this prissy girl right, right. Mm -hmm. so I uh, back to the table and my friends were like Rachel why why are you not teaching etiquette? And I'm like, right. this is crazy. I have a background I learned from um, other directors from New York and the UK. I mean, these people have taught individuals that work in Buckingham Palace. So right. I'm like, okay, I need mm -hmm. to do this. And I, I have, I would say a connection with people and I just wanna mesh the two. Yeah. So that's how I started for Noble Women. And I, I do that on the side and I enjoy it. It's very, very fulfilling for me. Okay. Um, what year did you start it? So I want to say about two years ago. So okay. Very, okay. Very, very recent. Two years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay. So 22, 22. And this year I plan on taking it to the very next level. I Ooh. want to do more. Yes, I want to do more in-person workshops. So if you are in the Charlotte area, please follow me so that you can see what's going on. But for individuals that are not in the Charlotte area, I still want to be able to teach them as well. So mm -hmm. I do have an online platform where I have created a book of, um, not like a book per se, but like a book of videos to show them everything etiquette wise so that mm -hmm. they can use the quote unquote toolbox before okay. they go somewhere. And so it kind of breaks down everything, but 
we also talk about femininity as well and growing that and we talk about marriage and we talk about relationships and traumas and all those other things all wrapped into one to encompass the entire woman that is that is a beautiful thing and it's definitely definitely needed um, so with you being uh, local to Charlotte, I know that something that I've always been interested in doing is doing like a tea party um, for for young ladies. And I have a 16 year old. So one of my twins is a girl. So I have a girl boy uh, twins. And, you know, I, I look at other cultures. I look at like the. Um, uh, the Southern Bells, and I look at the the Quinceañeras, and I see the um, you know all of these traditions that other cultures have, and I look at the the African American culture, and I'm just like I'm trying to think of something that our children do in our culture that is known, and I'm like I can't think of anything. Like I can't think of anything. Dancing. Yeah, I just, I mean, sweet 16s, eh, that's not really for our culture, but other cultures have cultural things that they do for their teen girls. And so that's something that I've always talked to my daughter about is like, as, you know, even though we are multiracial and I, I instill that in them, we're still African-American women as well. And so it's like, we don't have anything that I feel as a culture we can say is a tradition for our our children or a tradition for our girls that other traditions have or other cultures have. Um, and right. so I was I always said I wanted to do like a tea party type thing with the white gloves and get all dressed up and so forth. Um, so I might I think that you might just be the woman to make that happen with me. <laughs> it's, it's so crazy because June 8th, I'm actually going to be hosting a mother daughter tea party. Ooh, so you have to do yes. yes. <laughs> that is so exciting. Okay. Yes, and so, um, right now, which I, I told you on the back end, my business is going through an accreditation process right now. And so mm -hmm. once I finish that, I'm able to market and get everything ready. But June 8th of, of just in a couple months, really, need to get on it, Rachel. Um, I've already had the contract signed and ready to go. And it's going to be a nice, intimate setting, but it's for mothers and their daughters. And we are going to go over tea etiquette afternoon tea. And we're going to have fun with it. And we're, it's not going to be anything that is very um, snooty or anything like that. We're still very down to earth women. And right. I just want us to enjoy ourselves. I want us to network and I want us to learn at the same time. That is going to be amazing. Please, please, please send me that information. I will definitely promote it. My daughter and I will definitely attend. Um, June 8th is not in my head giving me any signals. So I don't think I have anything on the calendar for that day. But if I don't, my daughter and I will definitely be there and I'll definitely promote it among um the Alter Ego Project was as a network of professional women and women business owners, but then also, you know, with my my nonprofit and just all, all of our platforms, I will definitely promote it. Um, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Um, for you, you, do you have you have daughters? I know I saw a young lady in your pictures. Do you have two daughters or do you have a son as well? Yeah, I have one daughter who's 17 and I have a son who's 20. Now, okay. he never wants to be in my photos. He never wants to. He's so <laughs> upset about the pictures. So okay. he and my husband not take as many photos as my daughter and I do. Um, but yes, I do have two children. My daughter absolutely loves everything about etiquette. That's how she grew up. Right. And so her friends, they come over and we talk and have discussions and things of that sort as well um she's actually going to be getting into pageantry because Ooh. i also was asked to be a pageant coach and oh, wow. so that's amazing um, that, i can see it i can see that <laughs> yeah. so as I, I went to the um the event and i'm i'm just forever indebted to the individual the company that reached out to me for mm -hmm. that and I'm mm -hmm. like, this is absolutely wonderful. And so I have added a pillar for my pageant girls. And nice. so after you achieve the crown and you mm -hmm. have the crown, what do you do next? 
Or right. if you didn't have the opportunity to win that crown, what are some things that you could have done to polish yourself up a bit? And so mm -hmm. I give them from a judge's perspective so that they can utilize those so that they can win their next pageant. That is great. Tiffany, I'm sorry, you were about to say something. Oh, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I have like a piece of hair that keeps blowing in my face. So oh, like, okay. okay. <laughs> it's aggravating me, so sorry, I apologize. Oh, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. Um, I know uh, Tiffany has a daughter as well. And Tiffany, how old is your daughter? She's like, she will be, yeah, she'll be 20. Um, in a month. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're all we're all girl moms here. So this is fantastic. This is. Fantastic. I think we all girl mom power. Look. Yeah. 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 Because my son is twenty one too. So. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. interesting. You do not look like you have a twenty one year old or a twenty year old. I that at all the time. I know. I know. When we're together. They think that I'm their older sibling. So that's I just. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, yep. They don't yeah. like it, don't like okay. it but I love it. <laughs> yeah, take it while you can. Take it while you I'm, can. I'm <laughs> going to milk that cow as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Miss Noble, I had a question for you. Is, yeah. Noble, is Noble your real last name? It is. It's actually oh, my yeah. married name. So okay. Okay. I was like, that just yeah. sounds really convenient. <laughs> uh-huh, definitely. So... My husband actually gave me this name 19 years ago. Okay. And so um, I'm just, I was sitting there and I was thinking, and one of my best friends, she always sends me this Bible verse. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, I went to church. Actually, I did an interview on this with Pastor Tia Cooper of uh, mm -hmm. Nikeo Church. Mm -hmm. And she's actually one of the, the pastors there. And she spoke to me. And she was just telling me some some private and some personal things like about me and about myself and that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. And she said to me that what it is that I'm getting ready to do, of which right at the time I just had a notebook of notes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she told me something. And that same day, my best friend sent me a Bible verse. Um, and she said, many women do noble things but you surpass them all and i said oh my gosh that's a proverbs woman that's the proverbs woman noble women noble this is for noble women so of course yes. my husband is that and i'm like this is wonderful let me send this ei number <laughs> and so i start just Putting everything into context, and yes, it is my real last name, and okay. we are all women, and that's how I got the name. Yes, I love it. Um, because okay, so when I when I said okay, this is the one question that I have to ask for this interview tonight, because mm -hmm. I was like, Rachel Noble for Noble Women. I was like, I wonder if that's a you know a pen name or if that is her real last name, because it's just it it works it's it's perfect it's perfect for noble women it stands you it's very it's very regal it it's com perfect for what your mission and your purpose is and what you're doing um so i was like i have to ask this question that was the only question that i had scripted for tonight was to ask you that question <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. in fact it, you're not the first person to ask me that to be honest, because I know that there's so many women that have like stage names or whatever like that, but I, I really have nothing to hide. But I'm just like, this is, this I know is something that God has given to me because number one, it's easy for me. It's not something that is hard or difficult. And I love giving some type of teaching or instruction. I relate very well to just just women i'm a girl's girl like i love everything women and we all go through things and i know what women go through so it's easy for me to talk to them about certain issues and things that we go through it's easy for me to reach out to younger girls to actually help them cope with what your mom probably went through 
mm-hmm. to help mm-hmm. heal them early on. Mm-hmm. And then um, just teaching them, like I said before, what, what I wanted to be, what I wish I had growing up. Right. I would say that. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. And that's what Tiffany was saying earlier about, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Absolutely, she did. And now she's an advocate for trafficking. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's absolutely amazing. So many girls go through that and they feel like they're lost or they fall into the slope of um, being part of the fast life and Mm -hmm. having professions because they do not have family that's Mm -hmm. there for them or they feel like they don't or no one to talk to ever. So by you being that advocate for for young girls like that. I mean, kudos and hats off to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm very proud of um, Tiffany. She's very um, active in the community, especially the human trafficking um, community, um, sharing her story. And, um, you know, she she speaks to, to people as well about her story and sharing her story. So I'm very proud of her. We have a lot of similarities when it comes to background. And um, so that's why her and I work together so well, because we, we both have the same passions. But then we also, um, you know, are very big on giving back and sharing our stories to be able to inspire others like you're doing. So um, how does your, how does your hubby feel about you using his name for your business? <laughs> he loves it. He says, he, does. he absolutely loves it. And he's just like, just a part of you utilizing a piece of me to do something that you absolutely love. I'm proud of you for that. And so I'm glad that you were able to, use our name and to use it for something that is good and for the better end. And to add to that, my husband has a cousin. Oh, I get so emotional. So my husband has a cousin and she is in Arizona. And if she is watching this, you have to know that I absolutely love you. And uh, she said that when she saw the logo, when she saw the logo and she saw the name and then she went on to the website, she said, Rachel, this is our family's name. And the fact that you are taking it and turning it into a legacy of something that is so positive and powerful, I love you so much for that. And told her, I would never do anything that would disrespect like my husband's name, family name, none of that. Family is really big for me. Um, But I told her, don't worry, don't worry. And I want you to be on board. And she's actually one of the individuals that hooked me up with pageant people in California and in Florida. So I'm like, this is, it's it's coming around full circle. And Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, very, very, very grateful. And it just, it just works. Mm-hmm. I said, do it. And it. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and you said you've been married for 19 years, 19 years. Yeah. Oh, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. I'm just trying to get past seven years, girl. I'm trying to get past seven years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Marriage is definitely, it's not a destination. It's a journey. And yeah. so um, I, we talk about as what I try to do is pull out things that women talk about and discuss. And the goal is to go over those things, just meeting like this once a month, just to kind of talk about um, certain things, whether it's about marriage or whatever. So since we're talking about marriage right now with you uh, speaking upon it, we would talk about certain scriptures that you can use to think about before you fight. Mm -hmm. Or um, why is this argument happening? Is it deep traumas? You're a therapist, so you know things about that. Mm -hmm. Um, There were situations where I would argue with my husband or he would argue with me. And I'm like, where did that come from? Right. And it's because of past traumas from Mm -hmm. our childhood. And that's Mm -hmm. mainly why people argue the way that they do, but they, they're they not understanding why. So right. it just has pieces of that in it. But then um, again, just looking at yourself as a whole, as a woman. Now, when looking at the Proverbs woman, there is something where it says that she wakes 
up before the sun to like prepare for her family. Listen, mm -hmm. I can't make breakfast at <laughs> four or five o'clock. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Norma. I'm not any of that. I, look, I'll cook for you. Right. And I can't right. crack a dawn to do it because I'm busy as well. Right. So, right. Right. Just understanding where you are and just right. um, just being a wife and and just being a, a great friend mm -hmm. and not talking at your spouse, but actually talking to your spouse. It's a huge mm -hmm. difference between the two. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, yeah. Totally yeah. agree with that. Totally agree with that. Tiffany, did you want to ask anything of Ms. Um, Ms. Noble? Um, not yet. I'm, I'm <laughs> processing. processing. Yeah. Um, there, there's some things percolating right now. So, <laughs> give me a little bit. The more I get yeah. to know about her, the more yeah. I'm like, interesting. And I'm just in awe, really. <laughs> yeah. 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 This being is this is north, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being from up north, we don't really, really, like, I think I was, like, in Girl Scouts, and we did, like, an etiquette mm -hmm. thing for a badge. So right. we learned yeah. about, like, having our hands in our laps and mm -hmm. not on the table and you know, making eye contact when you speak with someone right. and things like that. So I can't even remember that. I, I can't believe I remember that though. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it will wow. stick with you forever. But even just, just thinking of like a uh, deportment and how are we, you know, who goes on the elevator first? Who comes off? How are we addressing letters to individuals? How are we speaking mm -hmm. to who mm -hmm. takes care of the bill? Who, mm -hmm. you know, how much do I leave in a tip or, if I have a gentleman, like, what should he be doing for me? Like, right. honestly, that's like coming into your your femininity and not not demanding it, but actually just being the woman where he automatically knows. I have to open this door for her, right. and I need to make sure that I'm taking care of this bill, and I need to make sure that you know just things that men should be doing for us. Mm -hmm. So it it definitely will stick with you some of the things that we talk about and we discuss. And so mm -hmm. I love it. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about myself. Um, just even looking at high contextual countries and low contextual companies, I have to learn that as part of an exam. Just mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? Like, why am I learning this? But really, when you do go to other countries, there are things that you need to know and how mm -hmm. to act and be and how we are in the United States is not the same in Africa. It's not the same when you go to Germany. It's not the same when you're in the UK. Like you have to, you have to come with it and you have to know what it is of, of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to respect others. You don't want to have people perceive you in a way that you are not and that's not what you intended. And I, right. I believe that most of us have forgotten about that or or just not to even care. I remember doing a video and this video, one of the videos had gone viral. It was crazy. I didn't expect it at all. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So I, I learned the process of like the social media, like being bullied, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I did not know um, that it was even possible because I'd never received that much. Like, I mean, it had over a million and something views. Mm -hmm. And all I did was talk about a piece of bread and what you should do with your bread. And so I said, some of us, we're making sandwiches with our bread when we're out to dinner because we're spreading the entire thing. We're adding garnishes to it, whatever, <laughs> and we're biting into the piece of bread. And that is not the the correct way or the proper way. And I said, so mm -hmm. what you do is you just take off the piece that you're going to eat. You mm -hmm. take your butter and you spread it and you only eat that piece and enjoy your meal. Right. And that's right. all I said. That's all I said. Oh no. And what happened? <laughs> Tell me how to eat. Who do you think you are? I like oh, Texas no. Roadhouse girls. 
ah, that guy, I don't care. He's going to still love me, blah, blah, blah. Yes, the man is still going to love you, honey. I'm not saying that he's not. I'm not right. saying that. Right. And I'm not saying that you must do this in order to stay alive. I'm not <laughs> saying that. We're just talking you. about etiquette in class. Exactly, <laughs> that this is the correct way to do right. it. And especially if you're going to a formal event, this right. is what they're these are the behaviors that they're expecting of you. So I had to learn something about myself as well. When I'm speaking and I'm saying something that simple, I actually have to say maybe a disclaimer that this mm -hmm. is something that you could possibly do, or this is something that you can consider, but it's not a requirement. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I woke up and my phone was off. I had to turn the notifications off. So I'm like, what is going on? And it was ding, 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 ding. I mean, it was on the shade room and everywhere. It was everywhere. Oh, and oh was, God. All know, over how to eat so bread. They're like, how do you eat your bread? And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to utilize this and I'm going to put something else up. Right. And that's what I put in um, the formal, the, like, getting dressed for a formal event and how yeah. your dress mm -hmm. should be and what the, the how should the how should how the dress should hit the ground you should have on clothes those shoes where your purse yeah. should go like things and like that's that. The one that i saw that one i saw that one yes mm -hmm. and i was just at one of my best friend's wedding and yeah. so it was a formal event i'm like i'm going to do a video right now on what we should have on because many of us and then instead of saying many of us, we should consider when right. someone invites you to a formal event, we mm -hmm. should be dressed as such. We should right. not have on cocktail dresses if mm -hmm. it says that it's a formal event. We right. should not have on jeans and a t-shirt if it says that it's a formal event. Right. Do you have to spend thousands of dollars on a dress? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. You make the dress. The dress doesn't make you. But right. just follow the basic rules and you'll be fine. Your confidence is going to radiate through. And so mm -hmm. you're going to make that dress look like a million dollars. But at least you follow the protocol. And that's the number one key to etiquette is mm -hmm. making sure that people perceive you in the correct way and right. not that you are being combative of what the rule is for their event. Right, right. I yeah. have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, something was percolating. See? Something was <laughs> so my question is, because we live in a time where women, uh -oh. um, okay, where women are really in their masculine presence in society, how is it that not so much that we can change them, but that we can open up the the doorway for them to see like put down the the the, the armor and the the helmets we don't need that here <laughs> so is there yes. any kind of like tips that we can give to our listeners or viewers on how they can um kind of dismantle that rough exterior and really let their softness come through i know exactly what you're talking about and the reason why so many women are that way is because they were forced to be that way. They had to pay all the bills. They had to work. They had to make sure that the children were taken care of. They did not receive any help. So it's forcing them to be hard so that when a man comes by, you don't know how to accept him wanting you to take a step back for you to go into your soft life era. And mm -hmm. so I am not saying that um, it, it's, well, I can say it's a difficult task to let that type of thinking go, but it's something that it's embedded in you that you can let go. You, mm -hmm. It's okay for you to have self-care for yourself, 
to care about how you walk out the door. My mom tells me all the time, when you leave the house, you leave picture ready. You never know who you're going to meet or who you're going to see. I had no idea that you ladies were even watching my page at all. Mm -hmm. But if I were doing something that was not in a, in a feminine sense, you probably would not be as attracted to me, right? Mm -hmm. So utilize your cues each day to say, hey, what am I going to do to, to be soft? All right, let me change my vocabulary in the way that I'm responding to someone first. Mm -hmm. Am I cursing? Am I screaming at the top of my lungs? Maybe I can bring it down a notch. Let me enhance my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So those are some things that you can start with. Another thing with saying that um, everything is on me. I'm forced to do this, I'm forced to do that. Delegate some of that work out. Delegate it to some of your family. Allow them to help you. That'll help with your softness. Or if you do have a spouse, instead of screaming and yelling, because face it, <laughs> you are yelling with each other. Nobody's listening at all. But if you right. say, you know, I need help in this. I'm struggling in this. I don't want to cry about it, but I need you to help me on Mondays and Fridays with X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. During those times, you know where you're going to go? In the bathtub, light your candles, have you some chocolate covered strawberries, read Ooh. you a book. You'll see, <laughs> your, you'll see your femininity coming out, and all of those burials will start breaking. You'll mm -hmm. automatically start to feel it because this is part of your routine. Another thing is um, how even how we go to bed. I I highly recommend it, and I've said this in a podcast as well. Um, I do have a podcast as well for noble women. It hasn't been as up to date this year only because of the accreditation. But again, after that's over, everything will be listed every single Wednesday. You'll be you'll have the opportunity to listen to those. In one of the episodes, we talked about um, just caring about the way that we're going to bed. So once a month, once a month. You deserve to go to the store and purchase yourself at least three pairs of pajamas to whatever in your budget. But even the way that we are going to bed in our nice matching pajamas, nice underwear, um, some women sleep in bras, some don't, whatever, but all of those undergarments, everything should match. And so automatically, see, all right, I have matching bra and panties. Okay, my pajamas feel good. I found a perfume that smells good on me. So you'll see those hard layers of just getting up, being grumpy, going, because <laughs> we're bringing in more positive things into our life, more feminine things into our life. And that's when we're taking over that softness. Mm. That, so those, those are, are some just, good points. Those are mm -hmm. some great points. Um, I have a I have a, um, a lingerie store boutique um, that I've had, and I always talk to women about um, being sexy and classy for you. I always oh, yes. get, I always get, girl, I ain't got no man. I don't have to wear no lingerie. I don't wear lingerie because I ain't got no man. I'm like, it's not yeah. for your man. It's for you. <laughs> it's, even though there are benefits for your man, lingerie is Absolutely. not just... It's not for the other person. It's to help you feel feminine and sexy and classy and sophisticated and just feeling beautiful in the moment. And there's nothing wrong with you doing that, whether you have a spouse or not. Um, I have a nightgown. It's a beautiful nightgown. I don't wear it all the time because it's like it's a silk long almost to my, my feet. Yes. But I love it. And every now and then I'll put it on and I'll prance in front of the mirror and I'll get my wine. And it's because I just want to feel that in the moment. And that's okay. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I love that. I love that about treating yourself, you know, and getting it, those those PJs and going to bed feeling. Yes. feeling yeah, mm -hmm. it feels so good. And so when you start doing those things and you're taking care of you, then it gives you the opportunity to take care of everything else. But right. starting with those pajamas, finding a fragrance that is best for you. I mean, I even wear perfume to bed. Certain perfumes to bed. Absolutely. It feels, it smells so good. It feels so good. Right. Mm -hmm. And regardless if I had a husband or not, I would always make sure my nails are done. 
my -hmm. feet are done. Like Mm -hmm. not just in the summer. Right. So just keeping up with your waxes. Like you said, like we're doing this for for you. Right. You're taking care of you. Taking care of you. You have to take care of you first and water your garden before you can be good for anybody else. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. I love that. Um, I think, okay, so I think I said earlier about the Southern Belle, and I meant, is it cotillion? Is that what it is? Am I saying it correct? Okay, um, absolutely. Wait, our, my sorority had uh, the cotillion just last yes, weekend, and I'm yes, going to that. Say, yes. Yes, that is something else that I've always said that I would I would love to be a part of and do that with my daughter. You know, those kind of things. So um, when it comes to women, and it sounds like, you know, when you do your post, you get a lot of great feedback and you get a lot of negative feedback because people are like, well, who do you think you are? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah so I want to ask you, what has been like one of your biggest obstacles to get over when it comes to helping women and girls? What is what is one of those big things that you really had to get over this hump to to advance in in what you're trying to do in your mission? If I can be transparent in this moment, I would say it's getting out of my own way because when I post something, there are so many women. They're they're afraid to put it like under the post, but they Mm -hmm. DM me and they're Mm -hmm. like, helped me get through X, Y, and Z. I was depressed. And I listened to your podcast and this happened. I joined for Noble Women membership. And since then, I was able to X, Y, and Z, like without telling their business. And yeah. so I'm this, this is really something that I have here. But what I do is I'm like, I have a notebook and I'm like, well, is this right? Well, should I talk about this? Well, I shouldn't talk about that. Maybe right. I should talk about or is the lighting going to be right? Or is this the right restaurant that I'm in? Is it too loud? Well, maybe I should just do a video and then I'll do a voiceover over that. Right. Um, well, who am I gonna interview about next? Who am I gonna interview? Is she really important? Right. Then <laughs> what does this have to do with etiquette? And so you see, you hear all of this going and what it does is it pushes you back further. And so when I got to the point where I'm like, what? I'm going to just put the information out there that doesn't necessarily have to flow like a book. We're not writing a book here. But what we're doing is we're teaching basic principles of things that we should know. Things, what are things that I did not know? And so I want to make sure that I start there. Mm-hmm. And so just putting it out there in the consistency. Now, both mm-hmm. of you are Muslims, right? Both yeah. of you are Muslims. Both of you work and you're busy, right? You have a whole life, same as myself. And so I have to set aside time so when I'm thinking about those feminine things that I'm doing or or just having that time to myself. I'll go out on the back work and I'll write out notes that feel good to me. Or if I'm in the back, I'll think about certain things and that feels good to me. And so I'll write those types of things down. And I know that other women can relate to that. Right. So, so that's what it is. Um, I would say for those of you who may be struggling with imposter syndrome, that's another thing that we talk about in the course. That imposter syndrome will keep you paralyzed. Imposter syndrome is something that is really real. It is real. But it do is. not allow it to take over yourself, over your life. We're all here. And we're all here for a reason and we all have something to offer. So Mm -hmm. what is it that you offer that makes you and and for everyone? What is it that you have? And so I love that. I love that. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are live on Instagram right now, and I know that it cuts off after an hour. We, we're going to go over a little bit. So um, to learn more about you, um, Rachel, please tell everybody how they can follow you for those on Instagram that are watching so they can continue following you before we continue. Yes. If you're currently on Instagram, you can follow me at For Noble Women. If you're on Facebook, you can follow me at For Noble Women. If you are on TikTok, you can find me at if you are not on social media at all you want to still be a part of the party i would highly recommend you go to www.fornoblewomen.com there are also interviews that are on youtube that's just started so it's not that many on there but you'll be able to see it and also if you are a podcast listener anywhere where you listen to podcasts you can find it at for noble women I have my little one beside me trying to talk to me. That's so. okay. <laughs> That's why I keep going on mute. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we talked about um, those things that were an obstacle. What has been, and I'm sure there's been many, but tell us about one like extraordinary, remarkable um, thing that has come from For Noble Women. You know what? Um, like I said before, that it's very fulfilling for me. I did a photo shoot recently and I had a few women that came and I did it as, as part of a Galentine's. And the idea behind it was for them to have professional business pictures that they can use for their businesses or their resumes or things that they do marketing wise, but also to show them how important special they are. I had a woman that was part of that photo shoot and she's actually, she was one of my mentors from when I worked in corporate America, very, very young. I think I was 22 when I met her. And she actually said, because of you, I was able to bring her back. And her was somebody that was inside of her. And so oh. while she was doing the photo shoot, I'm talking through her the whole time. We said a little, you know, a prayer in the back, or I would talk to her during the photo shoot about certain things. And then as the photo shoot is going on, I'm like, yes, you're so beautiful. You're an animal. Get it to me, right? Her <laughs> moment. And for her to see her photos of herself and all that confidence come through. I can't tell you everything that she said, but she was really happy in that moment. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I think photos for women can be very um, revealing in a good way. Um, they, they can be in a bad way, but they can be really great in a good way because sometimes we can, uh, as women, we're our own worst critics and we might look at ourselves. and you've got a pimple yeah. here, or you got a little pudge yeah. here, or, you know, your arms are, you know, I got this skin right here. We, we can be our own worst critics, but Absolutely. photos, a lot of times when you get photos back and you look at yourself and you're just like, wow, I look really great. Or, Absolutely. you know, if you, you do that extra step of getting your hair done or getting your, your makeup professionally done or not professionally done, but just doing your makeup <laughs> as something that you don't normally do um it can just be it can it can be very empowering to be able to get dressed up and do a photo shoot with your girlfriends and just have a great time and just see you know your your inside your inside person you know just really shine through so um i'm a i'm a big i'm a big pusher of of photo shoots especially among business women because sometimes we forget that just because we're business women we're still women too and we're still moms and we're still individuals and we're still feminine and we're still classy and all yes. of those things <laughs> yes we are and also yeah. just having those professional pictures what does it do it says a lot about you in the very beginning taking yeah. the selfies in the car or yeah. sending in photos that has the snapchat filters on them that's not business wise right so right. Just yes. having Having that professional photo shoot done, you can do mm. it once every two years or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Treat yourself to that. You deserve mm -hmm. that, especially when mm -hmm. you're looking to grow your career and mm -hmm. grow your business. Absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, early on, so I, um, my daughter that you can probably hear talking to me right now, um, be well, before we got pregnant with her, I know she's here. Her hair is all over the place. <laughs> I'll put her on screen. <laughs> um, but during COVID, I took a I took a break, and then you know, of course, you know, being there, you know, for us preparing for her to be born, um, I took a break from my podcast, and on our my return back. I had one of our early episodes was a photographer talking about the importance of headshots and for yes. business and how important it is for you to not do those Snapchat filters and for you not to have all these all this mess in the background and for you to actually take time to pick out the perfect shirt or the perfect business suit or something like that. And just how how it's an investment. It's an investment in yourself. And, you know, I, I hear a lot of them say, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. You're asking people and you're asking businesses to invest in you. Right. Why am I investing in you or why should I hire you or whatever if you have not invested in yourself? I'm actually going to go to, you know, other. I'm going to go over here to Sarah because mm -hmm. Sarah, we feel comfortable even though I'm a mess right now, but mm -hmm. looking at her photos, she gives me comfort that I believe that she can do what I need her to do. Right. I want to hire her for my company or I want to hire her for me or I mm -hmm. want to, you know, work for her department, whatever. Mm -hmm. You trust individuals when you see that they've taken the time to polish themselves. Yes. And that's what I am a strong advocate for. Um, yeah. It's a difference between looking at someone that may be polished like Michelle Obama or mm -hmm. Jacob or Beyonce. And mm -hmm. then you look at other people on the end that might be, um, I'm not going to say names, so you might assume me. <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to say um, some female rappers or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the Instagram model. There's right. a difference, as you can see, between those two types of women. Right. And who are you going to trust more? Right. And there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very big. Whenever I start working with, because um, I work with models and, and music artists, that's one of the first things I do is like we have to do a photo shoot. Because a lot of times when I'm asking you to send me your bio, which is a whole nother conversation, because People don't know what the bio is. It's a whole nother conversation. But when I'm asking you to send me photos and I'm getting selfies and I'm getting Snapchats and I'm getting filters and I'm getting something that your girlfriend took while you was in the bathroom with all this junk in the background. And I'm like, we can't use that. We can't use oh, that on yeah. the We can't use that on your bio. We can't use that on your website. <laughs> you know, even yeah. with my models for my lingerie, it's like, no, we've got to do photo shoots. I don't want you to just take selfies in the mirror because Absolutely. you're representing a brand and you wear you wear the lingerie. And like you said earlier, you wear the lingerie. The lingerie, you're just adding to the appeal of it. The Absolutely. lingerie, you know, that's not what people are looking at first. They're gonna look at you in the lingerie. So I always Absolutely. tell people, especially women business owners, invest in yourself. You know, starting our new podcast, uh, Tiffany and I are kind of spin off of this one. No, that was the first thing I said. We need to book a photo shoot because we need those things for branding. And just sometimes people just don't want to invest the time in, in doing that. But it says a lot about your business if you're not investing the time. So it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's your calling card. It's your right. calling yeah. card would say in the modeling industry and mm -hmm. so picking out you of all people podcasts that they want to listen to why mm -hmm. are they pulling yours first is it because i'm reading everything that you're typing out more than likely 99 percent of the audience is not reading everything that you have at the bottom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're going to look at the topic they're going to look at the photo, and then they're going to see if they want to listen to your podcast or not exactly Same thing with businesses they're gonna look at your resumes for sure to see like what this person brings mm -hmm. but believe it or not i say this all the time people are attracted to beautiful people mm -hmm. and if you have that knowledge base behind you with that beauty that takes mm -hmm. you just even further right <laughs> right yep and beauty doesn't mean I mean, beauty doesn't mean that you have to be a 10. It's about your appearance and how you present yourself. So it's not about 
yeah, fitting the social norms of what beauty is, but it's the the way you carry yourself and the way you portray yourself and how you want to be perceived. Um, okay. And that comes across, yeah, that comes across in photos, social media, websites, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you open your mouth, what are you mm -hmm. saying? How are you right. making people feel? Right. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Great stuff, great stuff. I'm so happy that we were able to um, get with you and talk to you. So tell us, what do you have coming up? What do you have in the works? And what would you like to share with those that are watching? Because we do, we have we have a lot of people watching you right now. So tell us what you have in store. What do you have in store with you? <laughs> Definitely say to join the For Noble Women membership. Um, get started right away. It's only it's forty dollars a month, mm -hmm. and in that you'll start to get all of the etiquette information that we've already talked about. I have invested in videos to uh, talk about table manners. Um, a quick snippet for afternoon tea, but we I also have interviewed individuals about certain things that we go through as women. Um, we have, what else do we do in there? Each month is a different topic that we discuss and we have a, a open dialogue conversation like this. Um, if you are not ready to invest just yet, you can go onto the podcast and just listen. Take a, you know, get that little bath that we were talking about, brew you some tea or champagne or wine or whatever it is that you like to drink and just enjoy yourself, enjoy your time and that information. I take a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of thought on what it is that I want to discuss with my ladies. And I can definitely say that you will be able to resonate with it. It's not something that's just out of the clear blue sky, but something that can also help you. And then if you are in the Charlotte area, like we said before June 8th, we will be having a mother-daughter uh, tea party where we are going to be talking about afternoon tea. And we'll, be taught, we'll have topics of discussion as well for that. And so I think that's going to be so, so fun. And yeah. I'm just going to follow so that you can see what else is going on and go on to the web page as well. Okay. www.noblewomen. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Tiffany, did you have anything else you wanted to add or ask any other questions? Um. I do have an idea. So I will be in touch with you, Miss Rachel, about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to reach out to mm -hmm. someone who works with survivors, and I think that maybe you and her could collaborate on a project, possibly, to kind of mm -hmm. help build up that confidence in Absolutely. these women who have been through the ringer. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just it just popped in my mind, so I'm kind of going to, you know, yeah. really think it out before I reach out to... Um, to my friend, but I will definitely put you two in contact with each other for that. Absolutely. I would love that so, so much. I, I truly appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, that this this is great. This is great stuff. So um, I am a part of a fashion show that's taking place. I believe it's September 28th as the Beauty is Pain fashion show. So it's for survivors of domestic violence. Um, and so I definitely think that you would be great to come to that because that will be a platform of survivors. They're going to be sharing their stories. And I think that you would be a great addition to that to that fashion show, um, especially maybe even because you're doing helping with the pageantry, maybe, you know, working with our models. So I'm going to connect you with the young lady that's putting that together. Um, I'm going to be the the. Um, the featured designer or featured stylist there. So I think that would be great. I would love to put you in something beautiful to wear. <laughs> yes. And then I would like to have you back for our community piece in October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month um, to, you know, again, talk about, you know, building confidence after trauma and um, kind of, you know, what that looks like. So I would definitely love to have you back the first Monday in October if you're available um, to be featured again. I think that would Absolutely. be great. I would, I would love to do that. Um, as long as it's not October 1st, I'm okay. a girl. 
Okay, you know what? I'm gonna look right <laughs> now. I'm looking at my calendar right now. <laughs> and he's gonna say, "Did you book something on my birthday?" And that's oh, all I'm gonna hear yes. for the next okay, decade. Well, okay, <laughs> yep. It's not October first. It's October seventh. So October seventh. I would love to have you back um, as our future community um, person to talk about building confidence and just kind of building that that femininity and that and empowering women you know, where they are, especially those that are survivors of domestic violence. I think that would be really great um, to do in October. So um, I'm going to send that to you so you can put it on your calendar. And um, I'm really looking forward to the to the tea. I think that would be a, a beautiful experience for me to do with my daughter. Um, and I'll try to get Tiffany and her daughter to come to. I know her daughter lives out of state, but maybe we can make that happen as well. Um, but I definitely will promote it because that's something that I've, I've wanted to do with my daughter and you're doing it. So I'm definitely going to make, make time to be able to do that, um, with you. Um, and I think that's really it that's going on for us. So I'm going to send that email to you about October 7th to have you back on. So please tell um, everyone again, how they can find you on social media. Definitely find me at For Noble Women on all your social media platforms. It's everything is completely the same, including the website, www.fornoblewomen.com. And on the website, too, there are links that will take you to the platforms as well. So whether you are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, I'm not on Twitter, not on Twitter, but yes, that's okay. everything that to know and also wherever you listen to podcasts okay great great well, we definitely, yes this has been really really great i know um tiffany had an idea about the podcast takeover so um i'll let her tell you about that briefly because we definitely want to reach out to you um about that as well so tiffany you want to tell her briefly kind of what we're thinking about doing so I came up with this idea of hosting um, a podcast takeover where um, I'm thinking it's what's just going to be like North and South Carolina podcasters. Mm -hmm. We all come together to network um, and to, you know, kind of share our experiences as podcast hosts and to, um, like I said, network, but with vendors as well. Mm -hmm. um, having the you know like a q a type thing um as far as like what you got why you got into podcasting mm -hmm. and um what is your why with podcasting mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. i'm planning on having it grow bigger every year mm -hmm. and possibly doing it like the first year we'll do it in charlotte the second year we'll do it in columbia south carolina mm -hmm. third year mm -hmm. atlanta and mm -hmm. then just include more mm -hmm. and get bigger uh -oh. venues to grow Mm -hmm. And, you know, just think, just to, to vibe out and, and collaborate with other podcasters and utilize resources that we probably didn't know were available mm -hmm. um, had we not meshed with other. Exactly. Other There's so many exactly. opportunities that come from from podcasts that, you know, I, when she brought that to my attention. I thought I already did like a virtual one, but I was like, yeah, doing it in person. And then that also be kind of, I kind of threw in there, we can have like our, um, our uh, customer, our favorite um, interviews or interviews yeah. come out to yeah. you know, really appreciate it mm -hmm. for coming out and giving us their time and letting us interview them and stuff like that. So kind of turning it, it into a, like a big deal. So yeah. Yeah. And possibly you know, like, extending it to content creators as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, love so. that. You ladies yeah. are on to something because there are so many people that do have podcasts and they're unsure of how to monetize from it mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know, how, what do I talk about? Like, what right. what platform do I use or what microphone should I use? Or, right. you know, it's a yep. huge difference and you just don't know. Um, right. Until you start, start, and yeah. while you're talking, basically talking to yourself, and you're like, "Is anybody listening?" And they <laughs> are. Yes, they are listening. <laughs> yeah, like my, I woke, I didn't wake up one day, but I saw my numbers going up, and the podcast has over sixty five thousand downloads. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna keep going. Like it's yeah. a, it's a deal and that gives you like that push to keep going it, does. it gives you push so yeah. i think you ladies are really on to something you should do it 
Yeah, yeah. Well, we yeah. Um, we're definitely working on that. And when we do, we do, we'll make sure that we reach out to you to let you know about it so that you can you can come on out with us. That would be great. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you so, so much. You oh, are you. welcome. You are welcome. Um, Heaven, come here real quick. I want to introduce you to somebody real quick. <laughs> So this is this is my my sixteen year old. <laughs> oh, you're so cute, girl! Yes. So, have to do a mother daughter tea, like an afternoon tea event, and so um, in June. So I told like her that, actual tea. Yeah, like yeah. we can drink tea. <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be like an yeah, etiquette drink like tea workshop and without stuff like your pinkies up. No pinkies up for your tea. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rachel, for coming on, and we look forward to meeting you in June in person, if not before. And just, just thank you so much for your time. This has been really, really great for our community piece, and so, we appreciate so you. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you. I truly All appreciate. Right. It. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight and giving your comments on our live thread on Facebook. We appreciate you. Make sure that you go and check out Ms. Rachel Noble, the founder of Four Noble Women, at Four Noble Women on all social media platforms and her website, fournoblewomen.com. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Rachel. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.